Now that we've had the notion of right to right functor, we can come back to our original story and define group cohomology. Let us fix a group G and look at the abelian category of abelian groups with left G action. These can be viewed as modules over the group ring ZG, and let us just call them G modules for short. Now, taking the G invariant submodule of each such G module is a functor from this category to the category of abelian groups. So we can define the ith cohomology functor of G to be the ith right derived functor of this left exact functor. From our previous discussion, we see that then every short exact sequence of G modules extend to a long exact sequence of cohomology. Now here you might wonder, but are these right derived functors well defined? Recall that to define the value of this right derived functor on some object A, we need an injected resolution for A. Applying the G invariant functor on this resolution gives us a cogent complex, and the ith right derived functor is just defined to be the ith cohomology groups of this cogent complex. The question is, how do we know that such an injected resolution exists? And of course, we also need to address what if two different injective resolutions yield different answers. But that will be addressed in later videos. For now, let's just address the existence. Here again, it's why it's good to view the category of abelian groups with left G action as the category of modules over some ring. Because it is well known that the category of modules over any fixed ring has enough injectives. That is, every R module has an injective resolution. So for all G module A, we can always find an injective resolution for A, and thus define the ith cohomology groups of G with coefficient in A. Now, this definition of this ith cohomology group as the value of the ith right derived functor of this G invariant functor at the module A, that definition, while concise and simple, it's not always so convenient in practice. For once, it's kind of inconvenient to have to compute a different injective resolution for each coefficient group A. And generally speaking, it's much easier to construct a projective resolution than an injective one because one can simply take, for every G module M, a free resolution of M. Thus we want to slightly change perspective and rephrase the definition of these ith cohomology group in a way such that their computation involves only a fixed projective resolution of a fixed G module. We can actually do so by rethinking this cohomology group as the value of the right derived functor of certain contravariant functor at Z. Here we are viewing Z as a trivial G module, that is every element of G just fixes every element of Z. If we take a projective resolution of Z, and then apply this contravariant home functor to it, then we'll get a coaching complex, and it turns out that the cohomology groups of this coaching complex are also exactly the cohomology groups of G with coefficient in A. Thus, this gives us two ways of thinking about these cohomology groups. This is not actually some kind of miracle or coincidence, but just an example of a more general principle. To see that, let us first rewrite this functor in a way that makes this situation a bit more symmetric. Observe that this G invariant functor is representable as the functor of G homomorphism from Z to another module. This is because for a fixed G module M, the group of G homomorphisms from Z to M is isomorphic as an abelian group to the G invariant submodule of M. This is because any homomorphism V in here is uniquely determined by the image of 1, since Z is cyclic generated by 1. But V of 1 is fixed by every element of G. This is because if we take any little g in G, then first of all G of V of 1 is going to be equal to V of G of 1, simply because V is a G homomorphism. But now, recall that we are viewing Z as a trivial G module. That is, every element of G just fixes every element of Z. So in particular here, 1 acted on by G is just 1. 
Thus we see that v of 1 is fixed by every element of g and thus must lie inside the g invariant submodule of n. Thus we see that this g invariant functor is isomorphic to this home functor. Putting it this way, we see that now our previous claim is much more symmetric. This is a phenomena that holds in a general category of modules over any fixed ring R. In such a category, if we are given an R module M and an R module A, we can form this covariant functor and this contravariant functor. Both of these are left exact, and since the category of R modules have enough projectives and injectives, we can take their right derived functors. The right derived functors have the following symmetric relationship. Evaluating this right derived functor at A should give us the same thing as evaluating this right derived functor at N. We call this common value x r of m, a. x here is short for extension, and we will see the reason for this name in future videos. For now, let us just quickly observe that from our previous discussion, we see then this that this. For now, let us end with the following observation. Based on our previous discussion, we see that we can think of this i cohomology group as the x group of z and a over the ring zg. This is actually how this cohomology group is defined in some books. Now, in the next video, we're gonna look at some examples to familiarize ourselves with this x functor. And then in the video after that, we're gonna look at some concrete projective resolutions of z using actual computation of group cohomologies.